We're now going to have a look at the multiplier process. A strange thing in this aggregate expenditure model is that if you increase investment, say, you're going to more than increase output and income. And that might seem strange. How can you increase investment by a certain amount, but then more than increase the resulting output and income? So let's have a look at our aggregate expenditure model. It's equal to y is equal to c plus i plus g plus xn. That's what we covered at the beginning. Output or GDP is equal to co personal consumption plus gross private invest investment plus government expenditure plus net exports. Now we know that C is equal to A plus BY. So Y is a, is a function of C, but C is a function of Y. Now let's see what would happen if investment increased by, let's say, 40 units. Okay, if investment increases by 40 units, what is the direct impact? Well, Y is going to increase by 40 units. Because investment is part of GDP, part of output. So if that increases by 40 units, output or GDP will immediately increase by 40 units. It implies that Y increases by 40 units. But now, if Y increases by 40 units, C is going to increase. But how much will C increase by? Let's say that B is equal to 0 0.8. So our marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.8. With every increase in income of one unit, we're going to increase consumption by 0 0.8. So if you increase income by 40 units, how much do you increase consumption by? You increase consumption by 32 units. Now, if you increase consumption by 32 units, you're going to increase income by 32 units because consumption is part of income. So therefore, income is going to increase by 32 units. So now you can see its income has already increased by a lot more than the original increase in investment of 40. Investment increases by 40, income or GDP increases by 40, but because income or GDP increases by 40, Consumption increases by 32. But then because consumption increases by 32, income increases by 32. Therefore, if income increases by 32, consumption increases by 32 times by 0 0.8. And then if consumption increases by 32 times 0 0.8, why is going to increase by 32 times 0 0.8? And this system continually goes on, and it will go on to infinity. So how can we determine the final result or the final increase in income or output? Because you can see the circular flow here. It goes from GDP or income through to consumption, through to income, through to consumption, through to income, through to consumption, every time going down by a factor of 0 0.8. In effect, we actually have an arithmetic series that goes on to infinity. So the multiplier can then be calculated to be equal to 1 over 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume. That is what the multiplier is. Now why do we want that multiplier? Well we can see that the change in Y or the change in GDP is equal to the multiplier times by the original change in one of your factors, which is in this case investment. So if we knew the multiplier and we knew the change in investment, we could see the, the eventual change in outcome, in income. Therefore, so if multiply is 1 over 1 minus MPC, it's equal to 1 over 1 minus 0 0.8, which is equal to 1 over 0 0.2, which is equal to 5. So if the change in investment was 40, i.e. investment has increased by 40, and your multiplier is 5, you know that you can say that the change in y is equal to 5 times by 40 equals to 200. So you know that your GDP or your income out or output has increased by 200 units. And that's a result of this multiplier process where it goes from income through to consumption, through to income, through to consumption, through to income, through to consumption, blah, blah, blah. And it just carries on going and goes on to infinity, but you know that the final effect of that will be equal to 200. 
Now we've seen the multiplier in terms of the marginal propensity to consume. It can also be equal to 1 over the marginal propensity to save. Notice that the higher or the larger the value for the marginal propensity to assume, the larger the value of the multiplier and the larger the eventual change in income or output. This makes sense because if you're timesing it by a larger margin each time, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller um, at a lot slower rate. So the change in income will be a lot higher the higher the value of the marginal propensity to consume or the lower the value of the marginal propensity to save.